So I will, uh, I'm, I'm the, the person in bold, the bold person to be in front of you. Uh, and I will tell you about the Parliament project. It's great that we have a separate session for the Parliament uh, and uh, I'm happy that I'm not the only person in this session. Uh, so the Parliament uh, is a Clarin funded project, Clarin Eric funded project. That's the, the first definition and the most important one in this context. Uh, it was started in 2020, uh, it was uh, related to the pandemic era, uh, but it grew into something more than a project. It now involves over 30 members, some of them are with us here. Uh, and apart from being a project, because a project is something that ed ends in time, it's uh, also uh, a couple of other things. So. One and the most important thing is the data set and the Parliament format that was created by Tomasz Ariavets and Matthias Kopp recently, uh, that uh, is a TEI format for encoding transcriptions of parliamentary speeches, currently available for 27 parliaments. So we have a, a nice crowd here. And you can see a map, as I forgot about the map, uh, with uh, the dark blue countries that have their parliaments, national parliamentary speeches encoded in parliament. Uh, the data set uh, is covering a couple of years, of course, it was impossible to cover everything we previously had or all the parliaments, all the countries have different situations, uh, but sometimes it's more than starting the whole period in 20, uh, 2015. I will have a, a chart in a moment. And the data is annotated with metadata. We can imagine that we ha can have metadata about uh, the MPs, where they came from, how old they are, uh, which, uh, which sex they agreed to represent. Uh, and apart from that, we have linguistic information in the data and lots of other things. So some structure of the proceeding or some extra linguistic clues that are used by the MPs while talking. But there is another slide about what Parliament is about. And apart from being a data set, a format, a project, it's also uh, the process of creating such comparable corpora. So we have a detailed procedure of how to add a new corpus to our data set. And we can offer new parties a substantial help so the encoding guidelines, validation procedures, the whole infrastructure around, built around the project and around the format to let uh, the people encode their data and to let the people who want to use their data, such our data, uh, use them effectively. And last but not least, I think that's the most important point in the whole puzzle, is the community. That's why we have this team uh, picture here. So. Uh, there was already some kind of community around parliamentary data, but it wasn't consolidated. So one of the most important achievements of Parliament is that we managed to have to get the community uh, together over the common goal. And what's great about this community is that we are producing this data and we are also using this data. Of course, we are making them available to representatives of social sciences and humanities, but we are also interested in using this data. So that's also quite, quite important because we know what to do with it. A little bit of statistics. Uh, it probably doesn't matter what happened in Parliament 1 or 2.1, uh, but you can, you can have a great overview of uh, the languages we have. Uh, the years we represent in our corpora and the sizes of corpora. Of course, we can see it varies from country to country. Uh, there are countries that were present previously and are not there yet, but I hope uh, we will uh, cover the whole Europe eventually uh, with, with our data set. So to use the corpus, you can download it in several formats. So there is a simple textual format with metadata, it's a separate metadata file, but you also have a linguistically annotated version. And what's new and what's great uh, is that you have uh, the English translation of all parliamentary data. Uh, so when you uh, log in to um, to the Clarin repository, because it's available in the Clarin, Slovenian Clarin repository, you will be able uh, to download the data on one hand and uh, click on no sketch and context to uh, 
open the website of your favorite concondor uh, and uh, search in the corpus. So searching is easy. You can see Polish parliament here, but every parliament uh, can be searched, of course, in this way. Uh, is in a dashboard, you can, you can use your familiar interface of no sketch. That's probably easy for everyone. What's new in the current release, I already told you about that, that we have the machine translated version. Uh, it was done using the new newest transformer models uh, based on the parallel corpora uh, from the Opus repository we heard about yesterday. Uh, because these models were available for all the languages that we were interested in, there was some post-processing involved, but that's not really relevant. But what's the most important thing is that you can really input a phrase in English, let's say, a Polish border, that's what I was looking uh, for, and see that it's being represented in, what we talk about in, in the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Great Britain, and Poland, of course. That's very great achievement, because without understanding some language, you can still uh, do some searches over corpora in, in various languages in other parliaments. And with the English translated version, you can also uh, make use of the parallel concordances. So, searching for the Polish border again, you can see the real text from this corpora, not just the translation. That's also quite, quite useful. What's also new in the current release is, uh, so I mean the release that's going to uh, happen in uh, the beginning of the month, uh, are the multimodality probes. So, there are probes prepared on multimodal data sets. Uh, with speech recordings aligned to the transcripts. There is uh, just one such data set created for creation that's called Parla Speech HR uh, that's already published over uh, almost 200 hours of speech and four years of parliamentary proceedings. That's the way we were doing it with Parliament. So we started with something small and then expanded. So that's, that's the way we are also doing it here. So uh, Polish, Czech, Bosnian, and Serbian data are coming please stay tuned for that uh, and we also have a robust pipeline for preparing such data sets in in more languages apart from having the data set and the community and everything uh, we started using the data and other people started using our data sets so i will now show you three inspirations as i call it so three use cases of what you can do with this data. So maybe everyone in the room has some idea of what they can do with their research uh, over this parliament data set. So the networks of power, you have links there. I guess this presentation will be available somewhere. Uh, so you will be able to see, uh, to, to, to read more about that. Uh, was the study about the networks that emerge from members of parliament referencing one another while they're speaking and checking whether how it corresponds to some power structures. So after performing the analysis, they drew, our users drew such great graph and they discovered that yes, just by talking, members of parliaments reflected existing structural power by means of uh, ministry positions that emerged from just the utterances uh, of, of, over specific topics. Another case study, uh, which is also quite relevant for all of us, I guess, because it's, it was done on the Turkish parliament, but it's probably the same everywhere. Uh, so the Turkish researchers analyzed the emotions uh, uh, in the utterances in the Turkish parliament using the six point scale, so six different emotions, anger, fear, disgust, sadness, surprise and joy. And they discover that one emotion dominates, and you can guess which one. Okay, it's, it's written there. So it's probably the same for all parliaments. I'm sure it's the same in the Polish parliament. So anger dominates the discussions. It's read all over the place. Uh, but what is also not obvious, I guess, is that the ruling party showed more stable emotions as compared to the opposition. So you can probably discover some new things or confirm things that Yes, you, you, uh, you were expecting, you were expecting to find. The last one, the newest one, because it's coming from the Hans Linke uh, Digital Humanities Hackathon this year, uh, was an analysis of uh, polarization in parliaments, how specific topics polarized 
different parliaments. When you have all these data languages and data sets, you can do it for many parliaments at the same time. So it was done for uh, Great Britain, Hungary, Ukraine, and Slovenia. Speech representations were calculated with multilingual la large language models, and they were visualized uh, to find thematic differences between political parties. And you can see these two major parties talking about healthcare, that they are clearly separating, the utterances are clearly separating on this graph. What's next for Parliament? Uh, the, in the nearest future, so the next week or two weeks, we are going to have the next release uh, with the semantic tagging, so there will be something more to talk about. Uh, we have the shared task accepted at CLEF. It will be a shared task by Chagi uh, Ekotekin and the team on ideology and power identification in parliamentary debates. We also plan to have a new edition of Parla Clarin workshop uh, submitted to Eric Colling. I hope it gets accepted. It's going to be the fourth edition, I, as far as I remember. So there will be definitely a Parla Mint session there. And we can also we can also think about what's uh, in uh, the, what's for uh, in it uh, in the future for Parliament. So what's the future of Parliament? What what we can uh, see in the slide is the more keywords. So we are thinking about getting more data. We don't have European Parliament because when you're thinking about Parliament, you can you may think it's a European Parliament. That's where multilinguality lies. Uh, but uh, it's not yet there. We just have national parliaments, but maybe we should have also regional parliaments and Europarl as well. Uh, of course, we can think about audio video data or more data that's parliamentary data, because when we think about parliamentary data, it's not just what they speak about, it's also about what they vote or the law they make. So voting protocols or the, some references to the, the process of lawmaking uh, might be also included in uh, in what we are doing. Of course, linking data, that's something that's quite obvious. And we can also, and I guess we, uh, we encouraged you with these inspirations to uh, create more applications or studies based on your own research questions. Before the newer version of the paper is published, please, if you'd like to cite or read about it, you can read our um, language resources and evaluation paper that was published this year. And that's probably our major publication with lots of authors because it's a teamwork. That's it. Thank you. Yes, I will display the map. Everyone notice the hole here in the picture? Is it the hole you are referring to? Uh, yes, maybe. Uh, is there anyone from the audience who would like to comment on this hall? <laughs> maybe <laughs> they would be better. Maybe the better question is anyone who can feel it. Oh, hall. Andreas can comment. Yes, I can. I can comment on this. Yes, we do have an expert uh, uh, from uh, Duisburg University uh, dealing with parliamentary data, uh, but he was not in this round uh, available. But we were in close contact, and he also published uh, the parliamentary data from Germany. That's the perfect situation. I don't have to answer this question. Yeah. I was, uh, what was my intention? <laughs> uh, do you have some questions? Uh, so I wonder, very often we use NLP methods to annotate our data. And uh, I wonder if you could comment on uh, how much effort it takes to adapt the NLP tools uh, to work with parliamentary data because usually our NLP tools are trained for newspapers or something. Well, I guess there's another question that probably uh, Thomas should answer who was involved in it, but I will, I will uh, say what I can say about that. So, it, well, the first thing is that we have 27 parliaments, so there were different methods of dealing with linguistic processing. So they, most of the time, uh, the party who was involved in parliament was responsible for processing their data or using their own best tools they are uh, they know about if they were not um, such tools were not available they couldn't do it for many reasons uh, we used ud pipe to do that and uh, well we didn't do any specific adjustments as far as i know right <laughs> 
So we just took what it was in stake. So I guess, well, with linguistic processing, we all know that, that every year a new and better tool comes. So maybe it sometimes it's better to, to uh, do what you can and then do it again after a year if you, if you can and have funds for that, because it's, that's another story that when you have 30 countries, then it gets big in terms of funding as well. Yeah, a follow-up question. Do you may, have you maybe checked the quality of the uh, tools used exactly on the data mm -hmm. of Parliament? What, what kind of uh, accuracy uh, and uh, different measures, different tools can, can produce on, on, this, on this particular data? No, we didn't check it, but I guess it will be just similar to, to what you can get on the newspaper text, mm -hmm. I guess. That's, uh, it's not spoken data, that's uh, what we should be aware of. It's, it's quasi-spoken, as we call it, so sometimes it's prepared, it's, uh, it's written, in fact, by someone, not necessarily the MP who is then saying these things. Of course, some uh, unexpected things are sometimes happening when they are talking, but uh, most of the time they are just longer speeches, and I guess the, the accuracy could be similar to what you report, you, you see reported. I was thinking about a uh, potential situation that they are using this annotation for further analysis and, for example, the comparison, some statistical significance, mm -hmm. significance mm -hmm. and that moment maybe it would be good to be informed what kind of error uh, the annotation has. Uh, well, inside. everyone is invited to perform such analysis. So that's yeah. the best thing I can say, probably. <laughs>